My name is Glendon Cameron. I am the founder of the Successful Business Model. You see a lot of conversations about building credit. And I am seeing people with 800 credit scores talking about building credit. So I'm going to give you the three stages of building credit and how to know when you're done. Let's say you're a young person and you go ahead and get your first credit card. That would be stage one. And it's not dependent upon your age, it's dependent upon when you get credit. This would apply if you're a 35 year old immigrant coming to America who's getting credit for the first time. So your first stage, you don't have a credit score and what you should do to start your credit, you've got two choices. If you have a parent with credit, they can put you on as an authorized user and that would literally jumpstart your credit. If you do not have access to a parent, and this is the strategy, you should have that parent put you on not one, two, but three of their oldest credit cards with the highest limits to give you the quickest credit score boost. I did this for one of my children and her credit score was 680, just being an authorized user. Now with an authorized user, they need to live at the same address. Typically, this is starting not to work because people are selling access to their credit history and the credit companies have kind of figured it out. But if this is indeed your child and you live at the same address, it still works. Now, let's say in stage one, you don't have access to a parent. Go to your local credit union. There's one in every state, a credit union that you can access and virtually any credit union will have what's called a starter credit card, usually a card with a $500 limit that they would give you to establish your credit, whether you have a credit score or not. A lot of people don't know this. So that's one thing you can do, or you could get a secured credit card. And once again, I will get a secured credit card with Discover, Citibank, USA Bank, or I would avoid secured credit cards with these other banks because with a secured card with Discover, Citibank, uh, US Bank, these cards can grow because once they convert, then the cards, you can get a credit limit increase from these banks and the vast majority of secured credit cards are pretty much garbage. If you have access to Navy Federal, that's a good place to get your secured card as well. So what do you do? You go ahead, you get your first credit card and what you wanna do is max it out. You wanna, if you got a $500 limit, you wanna spend 500 and pay it off every month. And at three or six months, you want to see if you can get the card unsecured. If you can get it unsecured, see if you can get a credit limit increase. What you want to do with this first card before you apply for any other cards is get this card to a minimum of $5,000, preferably the higher. You want to get to $5,000 before you apply for any other credit cards. So you would go ahead and do that. This is stage one and stage one pretty much lasts two years. Now, stage two, you've have two years of credit history, you've established your credit card, you want to have three to five primary trade lines on your credit report. These are, these are not authorized user accounts. These are accounts that you are the primary responsible party. Ideally, you wanna have five. And then you wanna have, and this is in the year two. So you've got your first credit card, you've got it up to 5,000. You want to apply for three to five credit cards all at once, all at once. You, if you have a good credit score and a good credit history, you pretty much get all of them. And then what you, this, this is stage two, and this stage two is from year two to year four. And at this point, in four years, you've got five credit cards or five open credit accounts on your credit report. At that juncture, you're done. You have built credit. Your credit score is going to range from 760 to eight something, probably in the high 760 to the high 700s because you don't have any mortgages or anything like that on your credit report. Now, that's stage two. At that moment, you're done. That's all you need. With those five primary trade lines and the, no late payments, no derogatories, you're pretty much done. And here's something that a lot of people don't talk about. You can get 
way more credit cards, but your credit score is not going to dramatically increase. Once again, the magic number is five, five open primary trade lines. Now stage three is the advanced stage. This is when you start building business credit. Now business credit is a totally different animal, but you need to have good personal credit to build business credit, especially in the beginning, and especially if your business is brand new. I'm going to give you a strategy that if you have listened to me, you've got that first card, then you've moved it, and you're at year five. Let's say you're at year five, you've got these five open primary accounts. What you wanna do is create an LLC, and you want to create an LLC, and there's an SAC code that's gonna say what industry you want to be in. You want to stay away from high interest, high risk industries such as credit card processing. You want to, you know, maybe publishing an education or something like that. So what you want to do is get your LLC, your EIN, and a business bank account and a business website. It'll be real important. I'll explain in a minute. So what you want to do is go to the internet and you want to figure out where these banks pull. Sometimes the information on the internet is 100% accurate, sometimes it's not. But this is going to be, because what you want to find are 10 banks, 10 banks that issue business credit cards and issue no doc business lines of credit. Because at this point, your credit history is four to five years old. You should be at a 750 to a 790 credit score. And if you listen to me, I'm about to tell you something amazing. There's a lot of talk about age corporations. If you know what to do, you can get half a million dollars of business credit funding without an age corporation. And it's gonna be primarily the business lines of credit. And for many of these business lines of credit, you're gonna to need to have a business website. And essentially when you go by your domain name, whatever your business is, that's what's gonna be your domain name. It's gonna, if your business is Bugs Bunny LLC, you would have BugsBunnyLLC.com. And it's just, all it has to do is just be a one page website. It doesn't have to be deeper involved, just spelling out what you do, contact information, and that's it. Now, once you have found these 10 banks, because you need 10, because here's the thing. If you listen to me and you've got these five credit, when did you get these five credit accounts? Two years ago. So at this moment, you have no inquiries on your credit report. Now, you can go for Chase Business Credit Products, but you cannot get a Chase line of credit because Chase lines of credit require tax returns. So you don't have those. So you can, this is why I say 10 banks. You want to find 10 banks, 10 community banks, 10 credit unions that pull from different credit bureaus. So you want to find three banks that pull from Equifax. You want to find three banks that pull from TransUnion. You want to find three banks that pull from Experian. At the moment, most banks are hitting Experian. So what you want to do is go ahead and start with the banks that presumably based on the internet research pull from Equifax and you want to put in you want to do all of these applications pretty close together because at this point you don't have any credit inquiries on your credit report so once you get these three credit inquiries on your credit report and once again if your credit is clean and you have decent income decent income is fifty thousand dollars a year or more if you're making like minimum wage uh, or doing Uber or DoorDash this may not work this may not work but if you have a solid verifiable income of $50,000, you will be in the house. So go to the three banks and the no doc business lines of credit will range from 25,000. Most banks stop at 50, some stop at 25. Then you would go ahead and apply for these three banks and these three lines of credit. And let's say they're $50,000. That's $150,000. And also you want to apply for that bank's credit card. Now, some of the banks would do a, a double pull. They'll pull for the line of credit and they'll pull for the credit card. Some banks will use the same pull for both products. It just depends on who you're dealing with. So let's say your first round of applications are successful. You now have $150,000 of business credit and you may have three business credit cards with credit limits between 10 and 25,000. You're not going to get a $50,000 credit card with a thin non-existent business credit profile. It's not going to happen. Then you just go to the next three banks and say you're successful. Now at this point, 
you're sitting on three hundred thousand dollars in business lines of credit then you go to the next three big banks and at this point you're sitting on four hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of business lines of credit and probably a hundred and forty a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars in credit cards now it's going to be easier to pull the cash money off those lines of credit than it would be to pull off of the credit cards because essentially what you could do is just transfer your line of credit to your business bank account and you're good to go and you can use that money for whatever you want to use it and this is a way for you to pull off the money off the credit cards what you need is a proxy you need your mom dad someone to open up a stripe account for you or a paypal account and then you can run those credit cards through those stripe or paypal accounts now if it's in your name here's a tactic that you can get around if it's in your name let's say you have a stripe account or a paypal account and it's in your name what you can do is create authorized users for your business credit cards and use the authorized user to go ahead and run the money through PayPal or Stripe. Because if you have the account in your name and you use a credit card, like you could do a small transaction, maybe, you know, five to a hundred bucks, they're not gonna trip, but you start running like, you go ahead and take 20,000 or $25,000 off a credit card, they're gonna look at that. There's something that's called a, a risk management protocol with PayPal and Stripe. In any transaction that's above 5,000, they're gonna look at it. Gonna, they'll let it go through, but they're gonna look at it and this could get your account flagged, anything. So once again, this is why you need a proxy because if you listen to what I'm saying, you go ahead, you go ahead and apply and get the business credits. At a minimum, let's say you get nine twenty-five thousand dollar lines of credit. That's um, one hundred and fifty. That's like two hundred thousand dollars. And that's on the low limit. And th these lines of credit do not report to your personal credit, nor do these business credit cards report to your personal credit. So that is a way that an average person can get three hundred. You know, if you if you if you're a high income earner, you can get close to 750,000 doing this technique. But once again, your credit profile, and this this is one of the things that's very key, you want to not have a bunch of inquiries. Ideally, when you start this process, you want to have no inquiries because typically for many banks, three inquiries is enough for them to deny you. So you want to start off with a fresh, clean credit report, move from Equifax to TransUnion to Experian. And here's where the game gets it's really, really crazy. All right. So you found these 10 banks, right? In six months, you can find 10 more banks and do it all over again. Did you hear me? Six months from now, you can repeat this process. So literally, this is a way for an average person without an age corporation to in six months create close to 600,000 to a million dollars in business credit without an aged corporation. This is why aged corporations are scams and farces because if you know what to do and you know how to strategize and structure this, you can get the business credit without having an established business, without having to provide tax returns. And once again, until these business credit, because once again, bank reports Reporting standards are a little different because they may report to Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian have business credit profile reporting systems done in Bradstreet. They may or may not report to them. It just depends. But at this point, as long as you don't miss any payments, as long as you are um, really good, you can literally build a million dollars worth of business credit in your LLC's name to use for your business in six months starting from scratch. Now, let's say you are late to the game and you haven't done any of this. Go to the beginning of the video and follow the steps because what you gotta do is stage your credit report to get these high limits because typically, I think I left this out, <laughs> what you wanna do is get your credit cards on your personal credit report to twenty-five to $30,000 limits before you start this process because when they look at your business credit, they're gonna give you more credit than they would give you for a personal card. But if you've got a bunch of two and $3,000 credit limits, all they're gonna give you 
probably on the max side for business credit is a $10,000 credit card. So what you want to do is stage your personal credit report with $25,000 and $30,000 credit limits. And I don't think that authorized users are going to work. I could be wrong because you know, when I did this, um, it was pretty easy. But once again, I'm in a totally different situation. And this could be considered stage four. If you have an active business that's up and running and you have tax documents, you can get six figure lines of credit. So essentially, you can go to Chase, you can go to Bank of America, Chase and Bank of America. You cannot even you cannot even get a business credit card from Bank of America without submitting your tax documents can't it won't happen so that's something you should know bank of america and chase i don't know about pnc i don't know about uh i think fifth third you can get up to 100k i don't know if that's with with or without documents but once again you got to do your research because here's the thing all of these banks are consistently changing and updating their programs so at the time of this video the bank's program could be this and six months in the future it can change give you a, a great case in point wells fargo had a secured business credit card i had two of them and one night i was out and i tried to use them and they didn't work and the next day i call and i find out that my secured credit cards were closed and then if you go to the wells fargo's website you can't get that product anymore they don't offer that product so that's what i'm talking about banks are consistently updating readjusting creating redoing their programs so this is why you always have to be diligent you have to go to my fico credit boards and look and see what these banks pull for and i will tell you that the, the research is going to be a little challenging because once you get to these higher level tactics, there's not a lot of people talking about this. You know, they're, they're talking about how to get a credit card, how to get bonuses and stuff. But these higher le level business tactics, they're not talking about this. So this is how you can go ahead and get a lot of business credit without documents. Now, at the time of this video, this is how it is. Now, let me go ahead and give you some of my thoughts about the future. I believe two to three years from now, you're not going to be able to even get a business credit card without providing tax returns. Banks, like once again, like take the CPN, the credit pro privacy number, the credit profile number, whatever it is. There are many banks like Experian verifies your social security now. So any bank that pulls from Experian will know if your CPN is a fake social security number. As in three years in the future, I would be shocked that if you were able Able to get a business credit product without showing tax returns or showing pay stubs. I would be shocked because this is where we're moving. So if you want to go ahead and run this strategy and use these tactics, you need to get busy. And if your personal credit report like me, like right now, I'm not in the issue. I'm not in the position to do anything with Chase because I'm beyond 524. But American Express, uh, I've got four business credit cards with American Express. Last year, I spent $165,000 with American Express. So I can do a lot more with American Express. And once you're in the American Express ecosystem, they do not pull your credit reports. They don't do a hard pull. It's always a soft pull. So I can get more American Express products. But until December, January of 2024, I cannot apply for anything with Chase. Now I have a Chase Sapphire car, but I don't have any of Chase business products, but because Chase's 524 applies to their personal credit cards and it applies to all of their business credit products, credit cards, lines of credit. So once again, this is a way, now if you have a real business, an active business, an up and running business, and you have legitimate tax returns, deploying this strategy and going to 10 10 banks and getting ten hundred thousand dollar lines of credit you can develop a million dollars in business credit pretty much within a year and this kind of gives you the credit power to buy real estate and literally and once again lines of credit are the most powerful forms of credit because you can easily convert that by transferring from your line of credit to your business bank account and you can buy commercial real estate property you could buy residential real estate pay cash now one of the things you should be aware of is the repayment of these lines of credit 
is going to be substantially higher than a mortgage. So for every hundred thousand, you're looking at paying about two thousand per month. So if you were thinking you can go ahead and download five hundred thousand dollars worth of business credit and go buy a house, that five hundred thousand is going to be about ten thousand a month in payments. So the house is not going to cash flow enough for you to use this to buy a, a property and rent it out. Now, if you can rent, get a property and get 10,000 per month, that would work. And then your property increase and goes up in value and you can do an equity play. But I'm just explaining to you that when you're using business credit product products, the repayment terms, other than that credit cards, credit cards, you got a $25,000 credit card, you can pull 25,000 off, your credit, your payment's gonna be 150, maybe 200 bucks a month. But with your lines of credit, it's gonna be substantially higher. So you gotta be careful and you gotta get, you know, and, you, and this is the cool thing. Once you get the line of credit, you can call up the bank and say, hey, if I pull off this, what's about my payment? And they'll tell you. So you can, before you use and deploy this money, you will know. Because I've literally seen so many uh, people talk about age corporations and and that, that's like, I didn't put this information out because I thought it was really dangerous because, but I'm resetting the YouTube channel and I'm resetting what I'm doing. And you know, this is why I'm putting that because this information is extremely powerful. If you know what to do, you know how to apply it, you can get, and if you have an active business and here's the thing, your business doesn't have to be doing like a million dollars a year. You could be, you can get a hundred thousand dollar line of credit with revenues of about 300,000 and you find 10 banks to get those lines of credit and then this is something else you should do. Once you get those lines of credit, you should pull them off your lines of credit, put them in your business bank account and start paying them back. Now, why would you do this? Because when you want to increase the line of credit, they're going to look at have you used the credit and have you paid it back? And if you just have a hundred thousand dollar line of credit and you're not using it, what's the purpose for giving you more credit? But if you go ahead, download it, into your business check and just pay them back and pay them a little bit of interest. There's a cost of playing this game. Then when you go back and say, hey, I want 200,000, they're like, okay, you've used it, you've paid it back. Sure, we can do 200,000. But if you don't use it, they're not gonna do that. So that's one of the things. So literally in about three years, you could have two to $3 million worth of pure business credit following the strategy and tactics in this video. So that's what we're doing here. We're trying to help people become better, more profitable entrepreneurs. So if you need some real help on making your business, helping you get to your business to that $300,000 limit, be sure to join the successful business model. Uh, the links will be below. We got two offerings. We've got how to start your first business, the, that bundle, and then we've got the digital nomad bundle, which teaches you how to use YouTube. And there's gonna be some high level tactics and strategies in both courses that no one is using and no one is talking about. My name is Glendon Cameron. I am the founder of the successful business model. See you in there. The links will be in the first comments. So go ahead and hit those.